Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another installment of the 2021-2022 Denver Broncos um, season simulation. Uh, this is not the excuse me. This is not the exact roster of the 20. I mean, this is not the exact season of the 2021-2022 Denver Broncos, but this is just a season simulation as far as. Um, what the what the actual Denver Broncos roster would consist of like and would look like in um, this season in Madden uh, Mobile Edition, um, we're going to take a look at quick look at the roster, and uh, this is a simulation to see what would happen if Teddy Bridgewater was our full quarterback at the start of the season. I know we've had plenty of talks and conversations with. Um, Superstar quarterback switch. Me being, excuse me, I have the yawns. With me being a Broncos fan, a, 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 a huge Broncos fan, I would like nothing more than a significant QB upgrade rather than the one that we have. Um, Aaron Rodgers is out of the picture because he's he's now back all in with Green Bay. Fucking punk. But um, it, either way, it doesn't matter. Um... Hopefully, we can get Deshaun Watson or something like that. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers, but whatever, man. I really can give a fuck less, you know what I mean? I guess we're just going to see what Teddy Bridgewater can do, I guess. I mean, I'm not the biggest Teddy Bridgewater fan in the world, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I'm not the GM of the Denver Broncos, but... We're going to see, take a quick look at his attributes and stuff. Um, if you don't know, if you're not aware, you know, the Denver Broncos roster, I did that in my Deshaun Watson uh, a Q, a QB uh, comparison in, 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 in franchise. So you can, you can go through those videos and look. Um, I'm very excited for this um, defense. This offense is really going to have to show me something. Uh, we're in day three. We just wrapped up day three of training camp in real life for the Broncos. Um, so it's it's day three of of, of a ten week uh decision of cutting down all the way down to the fifty three man roster, sprinkled in with some preseason preseason games as well, um to get down to the final fifty two. But in my mind, this will be the final fifty two. Um, this is not the, um, I don't know, well, it's not, I don't know when they're going to upload the new Madden Mobile, um, Madden Mobile 22, whatever, but this is 21, so obviously it doesn't have the new rookies in there, but um, I'm just making my mind up, and some of the guys that are in here um, will be some of the rookies that will, will start until Madden Mobile 22 drops. So that's a look at the offense and then the look at the defense, which we did a drastic overhaul in uh, uh, off the offseason, bringing in both Kyle Fuller and Ronald Darby, along with the rookie Patrick Sertan, who his name is Will Parks here. But in my mind, I'm just going to just 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 bear with me. It's going to be Patrick Sertan right here at Will Park. All right, so now that you're up to gist, let's get into it. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a huge, huge week one opener here in Kansas City as the Super Bowl champ, one-time Super Bowl champions, but a team that was really looking to bounce back from that devastating Super Bowl loss was the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely. Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are definitely looking back, looking forward to bounce back from that epic Super Bowl loss that they suffered to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where they were really shellacked and only held to eight points. Well, absolutely a re revamped offensive line for the for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Truly, truly is what they went out there and did uh, this offseason. They went out there and cut... So the, uh, excuse me, they went out there and cut some of the um, 
wily veterans that they had and long term, long tenured, longest tenured uh, Kansas City Chiefs and Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher, and replaced them with Orlando Brown and Joe Tooney. So there's a lot of there's a there's a lot to look forward to as far as hype against this uh, Kansas City Chiefs team as. Usual. This is the five-time AFC West representative and uh, AFC representative in the Super Bowl for the past two years. Um, with Patrick Mahomes and this Kansas City Chiefs offense, absolutely, Kansas City and and their offense is is one of the top, if not the top. Wide receiver and top offenses in the National Football League. I mean, with a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes and a burn or a shifty burner and Tyree Kill and and an all around tight end and just a one of the top tight end premier tight ends in the National Football League and Travis Kelsey along with some great receiving helping Michael Hartman and number fourteen the young guy replacing Sammy Watkins would be would, uh and of course their running game you can't forget about their running game with Clyde Edwards Alaire surely surely just a a a, a a smorgasbord of of talent for this young quarterback and this veteran quarterback. Absolutely, Patrick Mahomes now entering his first year of his mega contract that he signed last season, at the beginning of the last season. He now that contract now takes into full effect. And after the disappointing end to their their 2020 season, where they made it all the way to the Super Bowl, but ultimately got destroyed, they'll be looking to. Bounce back, hopefully, with a victory against their AFC, their AFC West counterparts in the Denver Broncos. But that Broncos defense would definitely, definitely have some have things something to say about whether the Kansas City Chiefs get another victory over them, which which bring their total number of of victories over the Denver Broncos to twelve, or would the Broncos finally say enough is enough? And we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna you know get one we're gonna get one on you. And the Broncos definitely did do that as they see the return of their ultimate pass rusher in Vaughn Miller. Yeah, Vaughn Miller is definitely back and he is ready to get this 2021 NFL season underway along with Brad along with his his uh his his teammate Bradley Chubb who. Just came off of a Pro Bowl nomination uh, performance of himself, and you know um, we get down to the end in this defensive line where Shelby Harris picked up a huge contract uh, this off season with some top tier play. Absolutely, when you talk about defensive tackles, he's one of the top defensive tackles in the league as far as his productivity of getting to the quarterback and also getting his hands up and deflecting the passes that come his way. Absolutely. And along him is Mike Purcell, a guy who was just off of signing his, making his contract last year as well. And just absolutely uh, is looking at what, what was got derailed by an ACL injury and which caused him to miss the remainder of the 2020 season. And, Mike Purcell says he is back, he's healthy, and he's ready to go. And right and right is rain. And we'll see uh what what some question what most questions on this Broncos defense has been answered. One still remains, and that's the inside linebacker, just how what what the Broncos uh, what do the Broncos have and the Broncos really feel like they have a, a nice solid piece and Josie Jewell and 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 Alexander Johnson, some two guys who've learned who've learned some chemistry as the the two and a half years that they've played together. And you know, uh, Josie Jewell really Josie Jewell says you know coming in and learning under Todd Davis has really um really helped his game and <clears throat> really helped him get to the place where he is at now. And um, hopefully he can hopefully that can all contribute to him. You know, and this linebacker core, you know, inside linebacker core doing their job. Yeah, they were ranked one of the worst, you know, inside linebacker cores of uh, last year. But, you know, it 
it's nothing that they can need uh, an off season couldn't improve and from what we're seeing and what we saw in training camp the Broncos really 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 are pushing forward and and Josie Jewell and Alexander Johnson are really honing in on you know getting better at all aspects of their games including coverage and we're we're going to see if that that works well and this obviously we can't forget to mention the the drastic secondary that the Broncos had after needing cornerbacks was their number one need this offseason. They went out there and got a plethora of ones in Kyle Fuller, Kyle Fuller, Ronald Darby, and Patrick Sertan, drafting the rookie Patrick Sertan with the number ninth overall pick in the 2021-2022 NFL draft. And offseason, the Denver Broncos were working this offseason and, and see if he can pay off. With the, with the dominant defense. But on the other end of the of the spectrum, it's Teddy Bridgewater show as the QB competition has ended in the Denver Broncos, making Teddy Bridgewater the number one day one starter after he beat a uh, third year uh, quarterback Drew Lock. You know the Broncos gave Drew Lock a lot of gave Drew Lock plenty of opportunity to show what he can do, and you know it's. It, 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 I mean, it just hasn't transpired into, and so now, you know, it's Teddy Bridgewater, you know, this is just like any job, if you, if you go up there and you don't perform your best, you're going to find somebody else, they're going to find somebody else who can do the job, and uh, we're going to see uh, just how well Teddy Bridgewater and this new offense now, being on his third <laughs> Third team in three years. <clears throat> Teddy Bridgewater is looking to rewrite the wrongs of the Denver Broncos have faced this offseason. And a guy that's surely looking forward to helping him is Cortland Sutton. Yeah, Cortland Sutton coming back off of that ACL injury and just truly, truly, a, truly an elite, an, 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 an elite wide receiver when he's healthy. You know, he can go out there and make all the kind of catches in the universe and can really stretch out defenses and make them and make them honest and make them respect, you know, these Denver Broncos wide receivers and a guy in his second year that's looking to make a, a, a better impact uh, in his second year, sophomore season, than he did in his rookie year. You know, a guy that, you know, really turned it on in, the, in last year. Uh, uh, the, tail, the tail end of last season, excuse me, I can't speak. The tail end of last season, but did suffer with some drops, the most drops out of all the rookie class of this season. And he said he worked with the, the wide receiver coaches and he worked also trained with his guys as well um, to get better and to make sure that when the ball comes towards him, he's going to make the catch. Absolutely. And speaking of. Speaking of, a guy looking to make the leap from year one to year two is also his draft mate, K.J. Hamler. Yeah, K.J. Hamler, a solid slot receiver and really was really was a a, 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 sh a shining piece for the Broncos last season. It's, you know, he was always finding himself open and obviously that what he did against the Los Angeles Chargers where he won the game in overtime and off with the touchdown and I mean won the won the game in regulation with the touchdown if the Broncos came all the way back from almost twenty four down. You know, and the Broncos offense really looking to thrive and strive and the running game for the Broncos looking to try to take that next step. Absolutely the Broncos saw uh what Melvin Gordon was, was able to accomplish last season and they obviously between the choice between him and Philip Lindsay, they obviously chose Melvin Gordon, allowing Philip Lindsay to walk in free agency, where he ends up with Houston, with the Texans, and um, Melvin Gordon, nearly a thousand yard rusher, looking to try to crack that thousand yard here with the Broncos, who have an identity that they want to pound the ball, to set up the pass, and then just just lock down on D. That's their game. That's their name in the game. 
and they're back and they're ready. This offensive line is ready with Garrett Bowles, Dalton Reisner, Lord Christianberry, Graham Glasgow, and the free agent acquisition of Bobby Massey, formerly of the Chicago Bears. They're definitely going to need their they're definitely going to need to be on their A game because Kansas City is no lame duck, and their defense is their defense. Although is although their defense one of the not the top, but top ten, top ten defense as well. Absolutely, their top ten defense, and it starts with Chandler Jones, Frank Clark, and the veteran vocal leader Tyron Matthew. So we see, we see. Uh, Will we see the Denver Broncos finally get over the hump of Kansas City? Well, it has to start with them beating Kansas City on the road. We'll send you guys to the guys on the field for halftime. We'll send you guys for the guys on the field. We'll see you at halftime. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Welcome here, ladies and gentlemen, to week one of the National Football League. As we got a, we've got a doozy for you, ladies and gentlemen. As we, we have the Denver Broncos going on the road to take on Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs making it back to back Super Bowl performances, Super Bowl appearances last season, but ultimately ended in heartbreak as they lost to the Kansas. I mean, they lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In Tampa, making it the first time in NFL history, home team has hosted and played in and won a Super Bowl in their home state. And Kansas City, it's a long off season, has been looking to bounce back. And the Denver Broncos, on the other hand, QB competition is what was swirling around the Broncos camp, and we now reach Week One with. Teddy Bridgewater deemed the week one starter here. And it gets no bigger test for the new quarterback than taking on the reigning, five-time reigning AFC West champions here on the road. And we'll see what, what transpires from there, ladies and gentlemen, as week one of National Football League commences. I'm Joshua Griffin. I am going to be your narrator here Bringing you, bringing you all the big plays from your Denver Broncos this season. And we are off here in Kansas City <clears throat> to start off week one. Great slate of afternoon games here. And this just happens to be one of the, one of the premier ones that surely has uh, uh, the fans' attention. It's just, just to see what it looks like and what the Broncos will look like as Patrick Mahomes takes his first snap. And completion right there to Mikael Hartman. It's a great, great pass right there for Mikael Hartman. And just a nice throw right there from Patrick Mahomes. You know, finding the guys and not holding the ball, not holding the ball too, too long. Getting the ball out of his hands quick and Mikael Hartman was right there to lead in the zoom. Yeah, Legion of Zoom is what they, the acronym is. You see the big time play right there from Travis Kelsey, the tight end. Travis Kelsey now in his ninth year with the Kansas City Chiefs. He's just truly, truly, truly one of the premier tight ends in the National Football League. And when you when you talk about when you talk about dominance, as you see Clyde Edwards Hilaire breaking off a tackle, but finally brought down. For the Denver Broncos unit, but great run right there by Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and you know the the second year, what what the what the rookie, I mean not the the second year running back out of LSU, and you see right ah, you see right there Tyreek Hill gets it in for the touchdown and. Well, it's going to look like the Kansas City of old as they waste no time getting into the getting into the end zone for the touchdown for the Kansas City Chiefs. And now just lining it up for the extra point, which is good, and it's now seven to nothing, Kansas City. Well, Kansas City just is known to line up the scoreboard with a quickness and 
you know, it's glad to see that that thing, that is, has, has not faltered as they're entering a whole new offensive line, you know what I mean, guys are, guys are, some guys on this offensive line have not been here last season, a couple seasons before, but out comes Teddy Bridgewater to see what he can do, and first runs by the Broncos and Melvin Gordon. A huge run right up the middle, and that is the type of runs that you're going to need to see from Melvin and this running back duo and this running back group here. Absolutely, Melvin Gordon in the starter here, and just looking to looking to really, uh, you know, take the next leap from from his first year, uh, from his first year in Denver. Yeah, absolutely, kind of a up and down. That's a throw right there, but just could not connect. Great coverage there by Kansas City as they were just all over the Denver Broncos passing lanes. In Teddy Bridgewater's first pass as a Denver Bronco and gives it to Noah Fant, who breaks two tackles and takes it up field and no offense, but a, a tight end who has stated he wants to be on the same level as the Travis Kelseys and the George Kittles and the Zach Ertz of the of the league. And with plays like that, he can definitely do so. The Broncos trying their head. It, <clears throat> you know, trying to toss with Melvin Gordon. Unfortunately, not unable to get anything significant on that run as he did on the Two runs prior. So it's now second down and nine for the Denver Broncos around the 40 yard line. 40 ish yard line. And oh, oh, and Noah Fant, another big time catch right there. Teddy Bridgewater really don't, really delivering those balls, accurate balls, and that's what the things he's been doing for the preseason all the way into training from training camp to the preseason. It's just Taking what the defense gives them, not getting too in. Oh, 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 great job there by Jerry Judy. A great catch right there as we were talking about, as we were singing the praises of Teddy Bridgewater. Right there, he throws another dime to, 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 <clears throat> to Jerry Judy and has these Broncos now. Tiptoeing on to even up the score for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they do as Melvin Gordon gets the first touchdown of the 2021-2022 Denver Broncos simulation season. As that is always a good sign to have, is you know to see you can go up there and compete. Just go up there and 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 make the wise the wise throws, make the wise plays, and. And just go out there and, and execute. Don't try to do too much. Take what the defense gives you. And, you know, the Broncos have really been searching for a quarterback that, that understands that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Teddy Bridgewater is, is for surely one of those quarterbacks that just loves to take what the defense gives him. Will occasionally throw the, throw, the, throw the long ball when they need to get something done. But after that Broncos possession, here comes Kansas City. A little dump off right there to Travis Kelsey to get a gain of about five yards. We reach the end of the first quarter as we're all tied up here between the Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs. Right here is Anthony Sherman, the fullback. You know what I mean? The fullback has kind of become a lost art in today's NFL, but... Glad to see that the Kansas City Chiefs still have a that's this is why the Kansas City Chiefs remain one of the top tier offenses in the National Football League. They still have that old school kind of, you know, 80s type of, you know, football savvy football type of aggressiveness. But they also Oh it's Bryce Callahan nearly took that back for a pick six, and that would have been the Broncos' first pick. Of the season, and the Broncos that that was one of their key goals. Only only having ten interceptions last season, they definitely want to, you know, 
uh, double that, you know, and really truly be one of the best secondaries in the National Football League. But it starts with them getting turnovers. Yeah, it starts with them getting turnovers. And, you know, this this offense, was I mean, this secondary was was cleverly constructed very well, very masterfully by the first-year GM, George Payton, this offseason. And uh, Bryce Callahan was get get his ankle fingers on that. Boy, I'm telling you, that would have that went the distance. What the French toast? <laughs> so Melvin Gordon running at, running pretty solid here in the day and running pretty solid here in the opening weeks of the Oh my god and there it is There it is that's what you don't want right there is the, that's what you don't want and that's what you don't need right there is a pick <sighs> And it goes back for a touchdown. It's Tyron Matthew, just one of the savviest safeties in the National Football League. He is very, 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 very dominant and has been for a very long time. He just maintains that level of high-end success no matter what team he's on. And now in his third year here with Kansas City is truly... No, his fourth, I'm sorry. I think it's fourth. I think it's his fourth year. I'm not 100% sure, sorry doing that, but whatever, how many years he's ever been here, he's just been a solid for the Denver Broncos. But after that pick six, here comes Teddy Bridgewater in the offense. Absolutely. The last thing you want to do is, is continue to give momentum right back to the Kansas City Chiefs after you did a wonderful job of their first offensive drive, or their first offensive drive going down the field and tying up the score, you know, count, kind of mistakes like that and it really cost you. Oh. Here goes Jerry Judy breaking off a tackle and getting more yards. Right, that is what you love to see from your second year sophomore wide receiver. Yeah, you see two catches, no drops. It's Melvin Gordon fighting. Great job there, great run there by Melvin. As it now brings it to second and three for the Denver Broncos. There's a motion looking. Oh! And just a solid, solid, solid job there by the Kansas City Chiefs defenses. They were on it. Oh. And Teddy Bridgewater finds Jerry Judy for a huge connection. And that's now three straight. That is now three straight receptions. No drops by Jerry Judy. And that is actually what you want to see. If you're open, make the catch and... The Broncos really emphasizing, you know what I mean, catching from their wide receivers and just helping the wide re helping your quarterback out. He's a new quarterback, new, new to the system, and the way the way you help him out, the way you give him confidence and trust in you, is you catch that ball. Melvin Gordon breaking off the tackle right there and just. So good, not only in the running out of the backfield, but also catching out of the backfield as well. Just a just a solid all around running back and dude, what the f? What the f was that, dude? What the no? <laughs> Sorry, motherfuckers, you're not doing that shit. Let's go, Mike Boone. Mike Boone, the free agent running back, you know, brought in, brought in from, brought in with the great George Payton. The, the, Melvin Gordon fighting off tacklers and just, that is the grittiness that the Broncos loved and 
That is why they prioritize bringing him back instead of. Wait, what the fuck? So halftime here as the. Oh my goodness, I did not even notice. Dude, just some. Mm. So, out comes the Denver Broncos who, after the halftime um, report, as we've seen, the Broncos really started off the game, started off the game pretty well, but just great job by Kansas City and their defense. Really not known for having the elitist of elite defense, but their defense has... Has 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 sufficed enough to. Oh, and a catch there by KJ Hamler, and the guy we talked about in the pregame coverage, as well as as one of those guys that are just always there and open for their running for their QB, whoever the QB has, and. Um, KJ Hamlin. KJ Hamlin can come off to be one of those nice little security blankets when all the other guys are wrapped up or tied up and couldn't get free. Oh my goodness, what kind of. Great job there by Noah Finn. He continues to, you know. She had to make his case to being one of a, a, oh. Dude, what the F? A nice blocking right there. Great blocking right there. Tremendous blocking. The Broncos need is guys that go out there and block. And, you know, it's been relatively close. You know, the Broncos like that. Broncos, Bron Broncos need those type of confidence boosters to say, hey, look, we can keep it close with the Kansas City Chiefs and if we can just get a couple of plays to go right we can get the lead oh my gosh dude I'm literally holding that fucking all right dude <laughs> and sack right there that's two sacks and no offense just continuing his dominance right there you know Using every bit of that six plus frame against a smaller safety, regardless of how good Tyron Matthew is, you know it's a tall if a, it's a tall task to take on a, a, a tight end. Yeah, and the Broncos doing a little bit of hairy up offense. They know they know they got the Kansas City Chiefs right where they want them. Teddy Bridgewater finds Noah Fant, and Noah Fant, who has been leading the Broncos' offensive drive here, comes back into the clutch, and the Broncos are one an extra point away <clears throat> from tying it up here in Kansas City, and that is the type of plays that they need, and they're looking for, looking forward to creating this season. Absolutely, and. A long offensive drive on there. Keeps Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines, which is something that most NFL offenses try to do. They know just how dynamic these Kansas City Chiefs offense can be. So the longer you can you can make a drive and force Patrick Mahomes to watch you instead of out on the fields trying to beat you. You see right there is Clyde Edwards Hilaire showing his pass catching this out of the backfield. Great catch right there, brought down by Bryce Callahan, who's made an impact already for the Broncos secondary. Nearly had an nearly had an interception. Dude, what? Dude, what? Oh my god, dude! I literally hit the Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. They want to try this bullshit, dude. I literally hit the fucking... Dude, I was fucking... 
Let's go! It's Vaughn Miller! Right there, able to get his first tackle of the new season. We welcome back Vaughn Miller. It's always good to see Vaughn Miller go out there and get the first, get his first big play of the new season. Missing the entire 2020. And, oh, shit! Missing the entire 2020 season with the ACL injury. And, and just a lot of ACLs and, and knee injuries. And a lot of injuries all, to, all in general last season. That bull! Let's go, Bryce Callahan! Bryce Callahan right there. Showing you his his awareness and his skill to go out there and absolutely be where the ball is. And he's ha he's having a tremendous start to the 2020 season as well. Absolutely having a dominant secondary with that consists of Justin Simmons, you know, uh, Kareem Jackson and, you know, Kyle Fuller and Bryce Callahan, Patrick Sertan, Ronald Darby, you know, this... The Broncos secondary truly has the, all the tools needed to be one of the top, if not the top, secondaries in the league. As they try to hit a nice, they try to hit a, they try to run with Melvin Gordon, but unfortunately unable to connect right there as it is. Now at the end of the third quarter, we enter the fourth quarter as the, Kansas City Chiefs hold a three-point lead over the Denver Broncos here. Let's just say the Broncos are absolutely all oh, Cortland Sutton. Oh, Cortland Sutton was looking for his first catch. Coming back off of a major injury as well himself. And oh, saw the pressure right there. Oh my god, dude! I literally dude, this is um I fucking swear, dude. They fucking cheat this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I Dude, <laughs> this fucking game, they fucking cheat, dude. I'm literally holding the X fucking button as soon as the ball is fucking snapped. And if fucking he fucking still gets a fucking sack, dude. This is fucking BS. So out comes the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, dude! This nigga breaking tackles like he fucking Barry Sanders or some motherfucker Deion Sanders or fucking motherfucking uh not Deion Sanders, Megatron or some shit. <laughs> I had to some sort of relevant wide receiver. Fuck. Let's go. Let's go! Great job, great tackle there, Ronald Darby. That's why we brought you here. Make those tackles, baby. So the Broncos really desperately, really, really would like to prevent Kansas City from getting into the end zone and making this a 10-point game with only two minutes left. It would pretty much seal the Broncos' fate if they do not get a stop. Dude, what the F? How the fuck do they make that catch, dude, when there's two dudes right there? How the fuck do they do that? This is some utter bullshit. <laughs> yep. Oh my god! And Kansas City and Patrick. Fucking, this is dumbass shit. Kansas City and <laughs> Patrick Mahomes just out. <laughs> Absolutely, just doing Patrick Mahomes things, the type of over across the body in in the in the heart of the Denver, Denver Broncos defense, and just absolutely creates another touchdown there for Tyreek Hill and Kansas City, just really, really doing doing their due diligence here in the fourth quarter to really make sure that they start the season out on a high note. It's, Melvin Gordon runs runs right up the middle, gets a nice gain of about eight, it was about seven yards. Sorry. The 
The Broncos calling the hurry up. They're going to the hurry up offense. And my boom. Not gonna get to the moon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The Broncos desperately just cannot get anything going as is another sack. Teddy Bridgewater. Ugh. Great completion right there. And the Broncos take a timeout. Desperately need to get timeout right there. The Broncos. We'll, we'll start the season 0-1. Uh, yet again. Yeah, we'll start the season 0-1 yet again. And, you know, there's, there's definitely got to be. Oh, as Jerry Judy get the first touchdown of the season. And Jerry Judy, what a catch. What a catch by Jerry Judy. And what the Broncos, what would the Broncos do? Oh my gosh! Oh, and the Broncos. Well, they kept it competitive against Kansas City, and that's what you want. That's what you want to see. You want to see these guys score more than just 14 or 17 points a game. You want them to get in the 20s, you know. You know the high twenties. You know that's 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 what's gonna win you a lot of games this season. And um, the 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 defense definitely has to has to regroup. But you know it's the first you know first game. There's a lot of new pieces both on offense and defense. So you know uh, the camaraderie that they built with training camp and preseason and just.